Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to look at the problem that you uh, that you mentioned. So this is uh, problem B from page six. So this is another five-step synthesis, or fewer than five steps. We have to take this starting material and make it into this product. Well, I mentioned earlier how important I think numbering is. This is a 0.5. We'll talk about what this means in a second. Um, so let's put in some numbers. So I'll call this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. It's always a good idea to number on synthesis problems. So we'll call those numbers uh, 1 through 10. Yeah, so it looks like you're going on to try to apply the numbers over here. That's a really good technique, but sometimes it's not obvious how to apply the numbers. If you try to apply the numbers over here, you will discover that this has 11 carbons. Um, and at this point, I think I would now give up on numbering this. Uh, because this has a different number of carbons, it's really not clear which of these carbons correspond to this. But notice that if you hadn't tried to number this, you might not even realize that, that this has an extra carbon. So we really have gotten a lot out of just numbering this. Um, we've noticed that we have to add an extra carbon. Okay, so I'll just put in these numbers for the time being. Uh, and we know that we're going to have to um, add, some, so we're going to have to be adding some extra carbons at some point. All right, well, one thing that I would notice here is that I've got a six-membered ring with a double bond. And since this is the first midterm, I'm expecting to use retro deals alders. Um, so let's try retro deals alder. Now, I don't know whether this is going to work or not, but it's, it's a pretty strong clue on the first midterm. If you have a six-membered ring, six-membered carbon with a double bond, it should do a retro deals alder. Remember, all you have to do here is just add heat. All right, well, now we have a challenge. We actually have to draw what this looks like after the retro deals alder. Now, this is why I said this is not so easy. Let's try to use the same notational tricks we did on the previous case, so this will be more difficult. To uh, draw the retro deals alder. really good. That's not easy, but that's good. All right, let's start by putting in the asterisks. Which atoms get the asterisks? The ones that are connected to the double bond. And which atoms get the dots? We know we can't put the dots up here because there's only one atom up here. So they've got to be down here. And anyway, usually when we draw the tent poles, we know that usually in tent pole pictures, these have the asterisks and these have the dots. Um, although if there were two atoms up here, you could theoretically put the dots up here as well. But in this case, this is the only possible place that we can put the dots. All right, now the first thing I'm going to do is move this bond. Here's where I can move it to. So I'm going to move that over here. And now I need to put in two more arrows that come back to the number two. Well, where, which bond should I put the next arrow on? 9 and 8. Yeah. Put it on the 9 and 8. Um, not up here. Remember from our previous example that the, um, what we, in order to go backwards here, what we're going to have to do, it might again help, it really helps maybe to make a very simple model. You can see here that to do the retro deals order, now we have to break the bond between the asterisk and the dot, since it was formed in the forward. So we don't want to break the 10-9 bond, we want to break this bond. And where should these electrons go? That's right. Um, we want to form a new pi bond between the two dots, based on our simple model down here. Uh, again, remember, don't put the tail over here. We've got to put it on the next bond over. All right, and now where should I put the next tail? 
again, between the asterisk and the dot. And where should the next head go? Um, yeah, it goes between the two and the three because we want to form this double bond here. And now we, we're back to where we started. The number two lost these electrons and gained these. Does it matter if our arrows are inside or outside the molecule? No, whatever, uh, whatever it helps you. Okay. This particular problem, you don't have to draw any arrows at all because it's not a mechanism problem. But for retroviles alder, I think it's a lot easier to get the right product if you draw the arrows. But it doesn't matter where you put them. Now I'm going to use what I call the redraw and modify technique. I've just redrawn the original picture. And now I'm going to make the modifications. Well, this tells me to erase this pi bond and create a pi bond between the 1 and the 9. So I'll erase this pi bond and create a new pi bond between the 1 and the 9. This arrow says to erase the sigma bond between the 9 and the 8. You can see how now I'm modifying the original picture. And now we should make a new pi bond between the 8 and the 4. And this arrow says to erase the sigma bond between the 3 and the 4 and make a new pi bond between the three and the two, which is the picture that you got, so that's good. That's not easy at all. You see why I call this redraw and modify. Start by just redrawing identically the original picture, and then make the modifications one at a time, the arrows ask you to make. That's a lot safer than trying to draw this from scratch, because if you try to draw this from scratch, you might accidentally make some changes that you weren't supposed to make, or add pi bonds you weren't supposed to add. So when you're doing retro deals alder, I really recommend using the redraw and modify technique. First, redraw the original picture, and then this is why I, I always tell students to bring pencil, because you want to be able to erase your original picture. And again, we went from one pi bond to three pi bonds, which confirms that we were doing this correctly. Uh, by the way, theoretically, you could have done the retro deals alder over here as well. You could have done a retro deals alder over here as well. Happen if you did that. Isn't it supposed to be on six member during six and five? Ah, you saved me. Very good. I was wondering, I was worried about that. That's right. You can't do a retro deals alder here because this is a five membered ring. Good point. All right, so we don't need to worry about this doing the retro deals alder because this is a five membered ring and not a six membered ring. However, you might see some hard problems on the test where there are more than one ring that could conceivably do the retro deals alder, so you have to watch for that. But that can't happen here. All right, um, now, one thing to notice is that these are both the same molecule. You see these are the same. They don't look the same, but they're both five-membered rings with two double bonds. They just happen to be drawn differently. They're both five-membered rings with two double bonds. So we don't really need to write both of these anymore. We can just write this one. So now notice um, they told us that we were starting with 0.5 equivalents of the starting material. Or this is, stands for 0.5 equivalents. How many equivalents of the product are we making? Well, if you're not given a number, you're supposed to assume the number is one. So they want us to start with half an equivalent of this and form a full equivalent of this. Well, we started with half equivalent of this. Now, how many equivalents of uh, these are that going to give us? It's going to give us twice as much, right? Every, uh, every one of these is going to turn into two of these. So if we only have half a mole of this, we would actually have two mole, I'm sorry, we would actually have one mole of this. This is the reason, the technical reason why the instructor had to put this 0.5 in here, so that you eventually end up with one mole, which is what you want to make one mole of this. I'm going to erase this now because we don't really need this anymore. But there's still two, you don't just like end up. Sorry, I guess I'm kind of being thrown by the. We point. have. There's yeah. still going to be two of the. Second. We have twice as many moles of this okay. as moles of the starting material. Um, so if we had started with one mole of this, we would end up with two moles of this. But that would be too much, because then we would end up with two moles of product. That's why, in order to get things to work out right technically, the instructor just said, specified that we're starting with half a mole of this, so that when we double the amount, it just doubles up to one. 